So do you need an MRI if you have lower back pain? Is this a recent episode or something just come back recently? It's a question that comes up all the time. At the end of the video, we're gonna talk about a few things to consider when you have this episode and when you need to go ahead and get an MRI. So what is an MRI? So what is an MRI? An MRI is, the word is magnetic, resonance imaging, okay? It uses radio waves and magnetic, magnetic waves to generate an image of what's inside a particular area of your body, okay? What we're looking at is a lower lumbar spine. Um, you basically lie down, you're gonna go into a, essentially a tube. It's a little claustrophobic. Some people need some anxiety meds or something just to relax a little bit. And it takes about 20 minutes to generate this image. And they're using those waves, those magnetic waves and radio waves to create this image of, of, the, of the soft tissue, the disc, the muscle, and all these different things in your lower back to give an idea if there's something that's of concern, okay? Um, it's a very powerful tool. It's incredibly detailed, okay? So it shows a lot, and unfortunately it shows a lot. It shows a lot of normal wear and tear that has nothing to do with your back pain. That's why to run to an MRI just reflexively is not good. You want to look at the whole picture like we talked about earlier what you tell the doctor, your exam, and things like that to give us a better picture. This is all part of the picture. It's all part of the cake. It's an ingredient in the cake to get understanding. They all have to work together to understand it. It's not done in isolation, okay? We can't treat an MRI. We have to treat the patient and everything they tell us. Um, so anyway, so there's a lot of things that are MRIs that, that don't mean anything. If the MRI is relevant, meaning if it's really important, uh, important, it'll show something that matches the clinical examination. That's like when we move you around, check your strength. And it also kind of matches oftentimes what the patient tells you, the history. So it's part of that picture and, and that's essentially, but it's a very powerful tool. Unfortunately, it just shows a lot of things in there that we found in, in uh, in studies that people that have had no lower, no history of lower back pain, a very large percentage have herniations, they have bulges, they have degenerative discs, arthritis, they have all these things that scare the bejesus out of anyone that if they ever read it before they talk to their doctor and understand, you know, we have to match that picture to the person, okay? So that's an MRI, it's just a kind of a quick overview. Um, um, the MRI also sometimes doesn't match. The good instances, I've, I've had people come in here and go, I've got a huge bulging disc. I go, where's your pain? It's on the left side. When you look at the MRI, it's on the right side. So it's got to match what you tell us and what the, cl the clinical uh, evaluation by the doctor or physical therapist. So can be very important in the, at, if it's chosen to, do at the, chosen to, to be performed at the right time. So do you need an MRI if you have low back pain? Uh, let's say it just happened or you've had it for a while. When do you decide that it's time that an MRI is necessary to figure out the problem? So uh, as physical therapists and physicians, uh, we see a lot of people with lower back pain. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a top reason why you're getting a doctor's visit. We see over 50% in a physical therapy clinic are people with back pain, okay? So it's very common, we see a lot of it. The decision is a three-part decision on whether we are, you know, whether this person requires an MRI. And what that entails is, one, we want to talk about the history. And the history just means you tell us how you're feeling, how it started. Um, did we fall down some stairs? Um, did we recently get diagnosed with cancer? Maybe we have something that's go to, you know, maybe the cancer is spread to our back. Do we have an infection? Um, do we have history of osteoporosis? Maybe we have this small little fracture in there that we have to respect. Um, how severe is it? Is it turning on? Is it off? Is it kind of related to a position or movement or activity? You know, someone may say they have horrific pain. And, and so when does it happen? Oh, it only happens when I squat down to the floor. Well, maybe we have to look at their mechanics and find out. But we want to look at that picture. And, and I really think people have to understand that the patient knows their back better than anyone. They know what bothers it, how long it's going on. They can really explain really clearly um, what's going on. In fact, I'll tell, you know, I, I started doing this recently is, um, not recently, but for a couple of years is, I spend five minutes, I try not to talk on the initial evaluation, just to let them explain it in their own words and explain what they understand as far as their problem and also what their goals are, okay? So that's a very important part of the um, evaluation, whether it be a physical therapy evaluation or a physician evaluation. Um, the other part is, 
going to check your movements. Let's see how you move. When you move, um, how does the pain act? Does it move? Does it go away? Does it get worse? We want to see if the movements match what you've told us in history. That's one thing. And we want to see if certain movements are really restricted. It tells us a little bit about your particular back pain. So it's important to understand those movements. So we'll look at movements. We'll look at strength often. We'll check your reflex to see if there's any kind of nerve issues that we should be worried about or concerned about. Um, we'll check the sensation. Um, we'll look at your movements. I'll have people go up and down steps. I may have them do a squat. Um, we may not go through all these steps. If someone's gotten a really acute back pain episode, we may just do a couple because we're going to aggravate it more than help them in the initial period. But we want to look and look at the physical examination. So we have the history, what you tell us. We have the physical examination. Then we have any kind of history as far as uh, any kind of images like x-ray, MRIs they may have done in the past. If that happened to be done, maybe sometimes no one has any images They just come to you and say, I've never had images, um, maybe I've had episodes before, or this is my first episode of back pain, and uh, I want to know. So those are all the things we want to take into, 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 into regard and say, what, you know, what do we got here? Okay. Certain things we may say, let's go see a doctor first. Let's go into it. I say if it's a physical therapist doing it, let's go send him for, for an x-ray. You know, well, they had a fall, they had a trauma. We want to make sure there isn't a fracture, that we're having them do all these movements first. So we, we just do in history, and then we send them back. We say, no, what? go to the orthopedist or go to your family doctor. Oh, wow, I've had this low-grade fever. Um, I've had it for a while. I have history of cancer, recently had surgery. Maybe we're dealing with an infection. Let's get, send them back to their primary. Let's get some blood work. Let's find out if there's something going on there. So there's a couple reasons why um, we're going to make our decision making. Um, and then there's other reasons we're going to say, let's, let's look for an MRI. We have a weakness in a particular area. Let's find out what we're dealing with a little bit here. We may then defer to doing you know, an MRI and looking into you know, what, you know, what, what, what that'll show us, soft tissue, bone, and other things. So there's some of the things that regarding that clinical decision making, you know, what the doctor or therapist does to make sure you know, we can, first of all, start treatment. And if we don't start treatment, what's the next step? So the MRI is part of that whole picture. It's a part of the cake. I call it the cake. We're making a cake. We're part of the cake. Okay, so we want to find out, you know, you know, with that part, you know, do we need that that ingredient to understand or to make make a good diagnosis and a treatment plan for that person? So is it safe? Great thing about an MRI, for the most part, is relatively safe. There's a few situations where um, you're pregnant, um, you have metal implants like prosthesis or uh, anything like that uh, within your body, uh, you may not be able to do it. May not be suitable for you. Um, generally just a magnet and radio wave, so it doesn't have a, any kind of downside effect as far as um, like an x-ray or a CAT scan. It has a degree of radiation, which is not always what we want. Some people have an allergic reaction. Sometimes you need an MRI. They ask you to, to inject a dye in you, and it helps us visualize certain structures better when they have a contrast. This dye provides a contrast to the, to the tissues we're looking at and this hard contrast, so you can really see certain things a little bit better. For the most part, it's relatively safe. A lot of people get scared about it because it does, um, it's very claustrophobic. Um, some people need to require like a, um, something to relax them, like a Valium or something, just or anxiety med when they do it, um, because you're in kind of a closed space, but it's for a relatively short period of time, about 20 minutes or so if things go smoothly. But it is relatively safe from that standpoint. Why is it not always safe or good when you do have an episode of back pain is what they found is people hear about all these things we talked about earlier, herniations, degenerative, you know, all, all these medical terms that scare, scare everyone a great deal. And what happens is people shut down. They, they, they say, I'm not going to do anything. I heard about this herniation. And that by itself makes them still slow down, stop, rest, and not move a lot. And it gets them, it, it makes them catastrophize. They get scared and they find they take longer to heal. Listen, when you need an MRI and it's necessary, absolutely do it. But to just do it, actually, believe it or not, not the actual MRI, the actual physical procedure, but what you get when you look at that study and you read all these nasty things, you get worried and you get, you feel like you're fragile. And that's the last thing we want to know. You most, the back pain is very severe. But in a minority of cases, it doesn't mean you're doing long-term damage. It's something you can't recover from. It's a very high percentage of people, upwards of probably, depending on the study, over 90% that naturally heal after two or three months. So we want them to move a little bit, 
remain active, make sure they don't, you know, a little discomfort is very normal and I expect you to continue to do activities, but you don't want to shut down completely. After two or three days, we don't want you lying in the bed. We want you getting up, moving. We don't want you sitting for more than 20 minutes. And generally I like to have people do a gentle walking program. Those are some of the basic points um, once, you know, once we, uh, we have this episode of back pain. So when don't, or when do we want to have an MRI? Well, they call these red flags. And red flags are basically signs of progressive weaknesses. One, where you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And when I say, you can almost see it. I've seen people in the clinic, um, I saw them one day and the next day they're a little bit weaker. Their quad is like shrinking a little bit. It's rare, but progressive weakness that happens quickly. And I don't mean just, you didn't work out for a month. I mean weakness because the nerve root is getting pinched. And that, that signal that the nerve root goes to the muscle that keeps that muscle going basically turns off because the nerve is pinched by a bone spur or disc herniation or something like that. That is a sign that we have to take care of this problem immediately. Do not see me go to the doctor in the emergency room. Uh, the other thing is there's a change in bowel and bladder uh, uh, functioning. And that means that you're not, that back pain starting right around that time is when you started having trouble functioning, having a bowel movement, retaining urine, all those things are very big things that you do not want to see a therapist. You want to go and within 24 hours, you can lose that function if you don't um, take care of that problem immediately. Um, Extremely severe night pain. Um, could be a sign of cancer, tumor, infection, something that we talked about a little bit earlier. Those are cases that you don't want to just ignore it. Um, in some cases, if you have horrible, severe pain that doesn't change with movement, activity, it's always like on high level, you know, high level pain, never change. I don't care what you do differently. You could do yoga stretches, a bunch of YouTube stretches, nothing changes. Maybe a sign of something that is um, not mechanical, it's not a physical therapy, it's something that could be, you know, cancer related that you have to take care of. Those are some of the categories that fall into, you know, what they call the red flags, which are really important to understand. So I hope this helps you out. Um, an MRI um, is not always essential in the first early stages, but there are exceptions that you have to be aware of. That's the red flags. Um, when in doubt, talk to a therapist or talk to a, a, a physician about when you should, whether it's not, it's important to do that. A lot of these uh, episodes of low back pain can be quite severe, severe and quite scary, but to doing an MRI or even an x-ray, which we didn't talk about as much, um, is not necessarily the first step before you, one, receive care or, you know, need to do. It may be something that you can, you can wait on and um, maybe get some conservative treatment and start feeling better. Okay, hope this helps you out a ton. I love to have you subscribe. If this helps you out, send it to share to someone or hit that and, and hit that like button if you, if you like the video. Okay, or place a comment and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can.